to the pit, to the ATR. I wonder if I should use the ATR. I don't know, Scott, you're so lucky. Dalian made the turn and headed down. Big ATR on this one, but remember, yen crosses are in Japanese Golden Week this week. Dollar yen uh, ATR is 114 pips. Find the five o'clock candle from yesterday. Go up to the 60. Hold on, and yeah, we'll find it. This has got an opportunity, but 1600 right there, and 114 pips. 114. All right, so we got room. We got 60 pips left here. All right. Matt D tells you you had a zero line break to the downside, 82% going in that direction. Uh, I think it's doing that. Okay. You got to know the statistics. And then a hook and a go. Let's see what the three musketeers say. And they say, yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. We're going down. Down, 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 down. All right. So they're going down. And uh, we need a, a hook here. All right. So back down to the 10. It's already hooked. All right. So there's the hook on the wick right there. All right. So this is enter when ready with a target at 132.69. And uh, here's the, I need to get a fib on here. Hold on back up to the 60. And I already got one. Do I want to keep that one? Yes. I, no, I don't. Okay. Right. I want to take a new, different one from the swing I. To the swing low, like down here, back up to the swing high. All right, there we go. All right, 1,000, 133.06. Yeah, I got 133.09. Just we're close, Larry. Yep, thanks. All right, so I got a hook right there. Watch for the turn. And there's the opportunity right here. Right there, we're going to hold to the 2.618 fib. Move our stop at the ATR target right there on the hook and the go. All right, you can see that trade one is going to be here, right here, right to there. And a break of that wick right there is trade two. So there's the snowman, dollar yens on the table. Be cautious. There's a lot of, uh, uh, it, it's not going to take a lot of volatility on uh, movement today uh, to have very volatile currencies. And that's for the next all week long, by the way. So. Uh, if you so uh, you're getting a uh, there it is there's the pullback break and a hook and you got to go already so it's this is enter when ready if you like it all right now, if you like it you got to have your entry order in all right now this is tough from here all right this is tough it's 55 pips but it's tough you need to be trading it up here so that you get a snowman see then you got this now that's worth trading all right why isn't this because now it's this and this and that's not 55 pips all right see that so um not it's not there all right you gotta you gotta, you gotta have a pullback on aussie again i mean on dollar yen all right and as an option at 133 okay and they're just shy of it right now so that means they're going to hold most likely so that means we might get our pullback chris if we have an option at 133 all right and uh how did he find that okay we'll go over here and we only got four minutes left and you go to options right there on the ATR. It's already pre-programmed to take you and show it to you. All right, pull it up. And here's the options for today. All right, so here we go, dollar yen. All right, so there's a $584 million option at 133. All right, so easy that was to find. All right, so you don't want to trade into that until after uh, uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, it has to be, yeah, it has to, uh, plain vanillas, Peter, have to be exactly at 133.00 at 11 o'clock. Now, barrier options means the barrier was broken, all right? So if they put a barrier option at 133, if they've ever taken it out since he bought it, uh, then it would, then it's already happened, all right? Uh, you can see there, they, they don't want to move this into there because if the option gets executed, it's going to go like this, um, I don't know, but they, they're billions of dollars, you know, and uh, although options are the smallest part of the foreign exchange market, it has the biggest payoffs. And that's why people do it. Right? So, and they pay people. We have one of our fast trackers who uh, that's what he does for banks over in Eastern Europe. Right? That's Anil Mangle. You might know Anil. He's a fast tracker. And Anil works out these things for the bankers to help them uh, understand their real risk. Right? That's what he does. Right? Pretty good. Okay. All right. So this is the runaway truck truck ramp. All right. So if you've ever been in the mountains and you've been driving in the mountains, and all of a sudden you come up to a big uh, 
a, a, a big slope to the downside. You'll see a sign that says steep slope, all right? And then you'll see this sign, runaway truck ramp. And so the truck comes down here and they have a ramp pre-built like this to go up against gravity so that if he loses his brakes, instead of continuing on and going faster and faster and faster and crashing, he turns off here and he's all full of sand and gravel and he gets out and they have to pull the truck out, but everybody's safe and toting the cargo. All right, so that's what you got to figure out. Anytime you make a trade, yes, you already you don't have to worry about the reward because you don't make a trade unless you know the reward. It's either the ATR or the 1000 or whatever it happens to be today. All right, so, but where do I bail if the trade goes against me? That's what you got to find every time you make a trade. So in this case, it was right here. All right, you open and close the candle right there, you're out. And this would have been your law. And you see, that's what Kay and Daniel did. They had little 20, 20 pip losses. That's it. All right, so that's really good. See, okay, you got a negative 21. Uh, you started painting yours back. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Pull back up again. And it is, all right, watch for it to pull back up and then go again. All right, so it's coming back up. And where do I want it to come up to? I want it to come up to former support, which is now resistance right there. So when it tags that line, that's where the trade is. And you execute immediately. You execute immediately. You know, you got, you got bears here. You know the bears are here. You can see them. All right. So you tag that line, execute a sell there on one condition that your entry order is in below this, this uh, support there. Now that's trade two. This will be trade one. There's a snowman. All right. How do we trade it? All right. Trade one, trade two. One third of my lots in the, in the, the head. All right. Two thirds of my lots in the body. And that's why we need the biggest space where we're going to put the most of our money at risk. We need that in the biggest space so that we make the maximize the opportunity that's there. The one third that you put on here, that is just putting your foot in the water, testing the water. Kind of like what you do in Minnesota in April, all the lakes are unfrozen, you decide you wanna go for a swim. So do you go down there and just dive in the water? No, you go down there and put your foot in the water and see if you even wanna jump in, right? because it might still be very, very cold. Right? So. Stick your foot in the water with one third of your lots, but you, because you only have one third of your lots in, you have to find a place to put the two thirds in. And that's why you have a rule that says, I press my winners without exception. And unless I'm doing that, I will not be successful. It's the secret to being successful in the Forex. And everybody's looking for the Holy Grail. What's the Holy Grail? Press your winners without exception. Find an opportunity and don't trade it with one lot or all your lots for five, eight, 10 pips, all right? That's a recipe for disaster. Right? So learn to trade price action and press your winners without exception. When you do that, you'll start having big pip captures like you saw Daniel with. All right, All right dollar yen. All right. All right, there she goes. All right, anybody in dollar yen? Notice the, there's the hook back up with the wick. They found sellers there, close and reverse, and they're, the, they're coming in right now. All right, anybody in uh, dollar yen? John is, okay, anybody else? Justin is, okay. Uh, Robin is, okay. So it's a live trade. Our target is 132.65. Don't forget you got an entry order coming in below 133 right there. And you're headed, hold, holding for 132.65 and then hold for the 2618 down here at, at 27. All right. I guess I got to play a song for it. Get it going here. So give me a second. I'll play a song. Get it going. Bring yeah. There we go. Break on through to the other side. Come on, baby. It'll do it now. But I played that song. Every time I play that song, it automatically goes and breaks on through. Yeah, right. I wish it was the case. <laughs> okay, back to you. So be aware. All right? That's why you got to watch the dollar index eight, ten times a session. Right? Because if it turns on you, everything flips. That's right, so what happened last night. It was going up like this, and then they flipped. Okay, so the astute trader is on top of that and uh, and uh, finds the opportunity in the other direction once it proves that it's going down. Right. 
So when did it prove it was going down? When it broke the 1,000 right here. See that? And from that point on, they never stopped, it looked like. Right? See? If you want it. Now, remember, if you want it, you got to have an entry order below this 132, 133 right here. For the, for the target 132.64 and hold for 132.50. So there's potential 50 pips in there. Don't forget, this is with two lots, all right? So if you do it below 132 right there and, and you get it down there and you get it to 132.50 right down here, all right? you get it to 132.50. Remember, this is two lots in here, all right? So your two lots, two thirds of your lots, that equals, equals 50 pips each, 50 which means there, that's 100 pips right there. And that doesn't count this little bit right here. Now, that one then goes 85 pips. So you add 85 to that, right? And now you got 185 pips out of this one little trade. And that doesn't that sound a lot better than five to eight pips? Doesn't that sound a little better than five to eight pips? Of course it does. Right? Who's in charge of making that happen? You. Will the will the currency correct uh, cooperate? I don't know. I have no clue if it's going to cooperate. Don't forget with that dollar index going up, this may be all she writes. All right. So what's going to be important now? Find the bailout place. All right. So how do I find the bailout place? Now that's going to be different for everybody. For me, this is the bailout right here. I'm going to connect these two dots. This this top and this top right there. And if you break this line to the upside, I'm out. All right. So my total risk now is going to be right here. That's my risk for that reward. So it's a little better than one, one to one, almost one to two, not quite. All right. But that's my total risk. All right. So keep an eye on it. Watch it. And why would we have to do that? Because the Aussie, we don't know about the dollar index. And right now the dollar says we may go up. See the bull, even though it went down, the bulls were fighting it the whole way down, trying to buy, trying to buy, trying to buy, trying to buy. Right? So when they got to the 786, the sellers took the pressure off, which allowed the bulls to get in. All right? See? Right there. All right? So this support was resistance there. So if we come up to here and we get and it becomes resistance again, then we should resume to the downside. But if it doesn't, breaks up in here, now you're in trouble. And that's why you need to know where that bailout place is. All right. I could come up here, find some sellers and turn to the downside like that. All right. So I'll give them that. I'm not going to give them any more than that. That's it. So some total risk is right there. I forgot to put uh, live trade on here. All right. So uh, this is a uh, spreadsheet that we developed to uh, show this. OK, so you can see down here that uh, no matter what, what you're trading, I got 30 pip stops. OK, now, if you put a 30 pip stop on your trade, you're going to get stopped out. Most likely every trade stands on its own. But the, 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 the stop is to protect your margin, not the trade. But the, uh, you got to use the parameters of the trade to set the, uh, the stop, all right? So some trade may need only 26 pips. You're trading close and reverses. They could be five or eight pips. Uh, you're trading uh, an other thing. It might need 42 on this one. Everything's sort of relative, all right? As long as there's risk for reward. When I was at FXDD, um, they, um, I asked the guys in the pits one day, I said, what's the average retail trader actually take out of the market? And they told me, Five day pips. That's what the retail trader trades for. Five day pips. Now, using that as your example, you can see here that in order for you to be successful and have an increase in your account, you have to be 90% correct. 90 out of 100 trades, you got to win. What are the odds of that? Because the trend losses at 30 wipe out the wins of five day pips, right? So that isn't going to work, all right? So we're going to change this to be uh, a one-for-one one risk to reward ratio. We're going to change this to 30 pips. We're going to risk 30 pips to make 30 pips, all right? So now you see that if I make 100 trades and I lose 50 of them, I will still break even, all right? Because the losses won't overcome my win. So if I could just trade at 51%, right, I could be successful, all right? Now, we never trade for 30 pips, all right? That, that's not going to happen. Our minimum trade is 55 pips. So I'm going to change this to 55 pips. And now you see things have changed dramatically here. I still have an increase in my margin account, 
if I can trade at 40%. I can lose 60 out of 100 trades and still have an increase in my margin account. But look what happens when I raise my uh, skill level up to, uh, let's go to 60% because I get to 65. At 60%, I'm pulling $210 out of the market instead of 40, all right? So what's that? That's a what 600% increase, all right? That's huge, all right? So we got to go for 55 pips, so we stack the deck against us so that we don't um, uh, have to be the best trader on the planet, all right? So uh, then they'll just prove this in the real world, okay? Um, in the real world, this is a broker, a Forex broker, who did a, a contest, and somebody won it. At the end of the contest, they took a look at all the accounts that lost money in the contest. Contest. They were right about the trade 64% of the time. 64% of the time, they got it right, but they all lost money because their average pip capture was 5.7 pips. Now, all the winning accounts with one guy on the top of that heat were 6% better at finding a trade. Not much difference. But they all made money because the average pip capture was 36.49. So there you go. Proof is in the pudding. The numbers don't lie. You cannot be successful if you're scalping. So you've got to quit it. Well, how do I quit it? I, I have to quit it. That's what I have to do and replace it with a new and different way, which is target trading. All right. All right. Here we are. We're at the point where they have to talk to us now. All right. You got to talk to me now or else. Because right. why is that? Because I'm at former support, now resistance. Right. The former support is resistance. If you're a strong enough resistance, they'll turn it down. But if the bulls get control, they're going to push it up here. That's why I got to have the bailout. I got to know where that is before I ever, ever uh, trade. I have to know that. I got to know the risk for reward, for one. I got to know how to move my stops, how to protect myself in case it doesn't go the way I planned. All right. So the chart tells you how to do that. All right. Everybody should be out right there. We'll see what the losses are tomorrow. Don't forget it. Or uh, we could actually get the losses now. You should be out now. All right. So that's your bailout zone. What are your losses? We'll count them up here. Six, we had a negative 16 for Justin. Who else? I would see negative 15 for John. Good. Anybody else? Negative 12 for Larry. Okay. Oh, Craig's still here or not? Just checking. No, Craig's already left. Let me add this up here. All right. Uh, Robin, 9 and 26. So Robin did well. And she moved her stop early, see? So she saw the danger and she protected her profit. 